Hello, welcome to another session of Digital Slide Review and Sign Out. I'm Dr. Lewis Hassel and our program part of the Digital Anatomic Pathology Academy, which comes to us uh, courtesy of the Digital Pathology Association and PATH presenter. Our case today, a uh, case uh, we encountered here in GI pathology on the OU campus, a 31-year-old man who uh, has uh, a history of HIV and has uh, recently noted diarrhea. Um, well, of course, anyone with HIV and diarrhea, there's just a host of possibilities. Um, and when you think about the various infections that can complicate the GI tract associated with HIV or AIDS, uh, it's pretty much a, a whole course in uh, microbiology and virology, as well as uh, a little bit of uh, uh, parasitology as well. On the viral side of things, HMV, excuse me, uh, CMV uh, certainly can be an occult cause of uh, uh, diarrhea. HSV less likely, uh, and uh, human herpes virus 8 uh, associated with Kaposi's disease sarcoma, less likely to produce uh, uh, um, diarrhea. But there are other uh, viruses like rotavirus and various other more typical viruses that also can occur in this setting and uh, account for diarrhea. On the bacterial side of things, uh, certainly uh, spiroketosis, uh, uh, maybe an under-recognized entity, uh, can also uh, produce a, a bit of a discharge, uh, particularly in these patients who can be uh, quite overgrown with these uh, spirochetes. Uh, and then typical sources like Shigella salmonella, uh, Clostridium, uh, also can cause uh, diarrhea in these patients um, uh, due to a variety of uh, exposures that they may have. On the protozoal side of things, we have to think about cryptosporidia, easily overlooked microscopically. Uh, and then uh, more frequent causes like toxoplasmosis or microsporidia, uh, occasionally isospora belli, uh, isospora belli uh, and giardia can also uh, present in these uh, patients depending on their exposures uh, and their uh, activities. Uh, fungal uh, disorders uh, also are uh, typically uh, not the most common things in uh, these situations, but uh, uh, can present. Uh, and so uh, thinking of uh, things that maybe you usually see in other locations like histoplasmosis, candidiasis in the upper tract, uh, rarely in the lower tract, and uh, coccidiomycosis and cryptococcus also need to be considered. And uh, so pretty much uh, in a patient with this history, uh, a routine uh, uh, acid fast, maybe some screening uh, antiviral immunoperoxidase, as well as a GMS stain uh, should be uh, kind of de rigueur uh, in evaluation of these uh, lesions. So uh, our patient presented with uh, uh, diarrhea and had several uh, colonic biopsies performed. As we can see here at low magnification, uh, most of these biopsies have a fairly uh, normal appearing uh, uh, gland to stroma ratio. Uh, it doesn't look uh, particularly uh, striking in terms of distortion. Uh, no granuloma is immediately recognized. We do have this uh, fragment here where there's a little bit of more bluish tissue and maybe more here as well. Uh, and so that might be the area where we would want to go and look first. Um, or uh, if you're like me, sometimes you like to look uh, where there isn't anything of note initially to see if you might be missing something. So taking a good look at these crypts to make sure there's not uh, cryptosporidia. Uh, here we see another little uh, granule of something here in the stroma. Uh, that could be something. Um, we'll take a look at some of these other areas. Uh, here again, looking at the vasculature, uh, we're not seeing uh, evidence of uh, CMV. The stromal cells, the uh, lar enlarged uh, crypt cells are not present but we do see these little small areas where the stroma changes character, the glands separate slightly, the crypts are more separate. Um, and as we look in here, we can see that there's a, a little bit of busyness uh, here, maybe a little bit of bluish haze uh, in these uh, uh, stromal cells. So these do not look like normal stromal cells. Uh, this could be just a, uh, histiocytes, uh, as in a xanthelasma sort of lesion, uh, but we see several of them, and so we'll take a look at some of this, these, these others as well. Uh, here's a nice example 
uh, one where there's uh, obviously involving the full thickness of the mucosa uh, down to the muscularis mucosa and even extending beyond that uh, with this uh, faintly uh, foamy uh, situation. And um, if you can use your imagination, you might see that there's a little bit of a sort of punctate uh, purplish hue to these uh, uh, histiocytes here. Uh, as we look at what's falling apart here, we see that these are uh, histiocyte type cells. And again, in these uh, cells that are being shed in the erosion or disruption here, there's these little purple uh, dots and uh, surrounding clear zones uh, in the uh, uh, macrophage cytoplasm. So uh, having done our due diligence and looked around, not finding viral stains or not viral uh, inclusions, uh, not seeing any parasites, not seeing any acute ulcerations, but seeing these clusters of histiocytes, we ought to be very uh, concerned about the possibility of uh, fungal infection or possibly a histiocyte containing bacterium. And so here's our GMS stain, as you can see at high magnification, this is staining very nicely with these uh, yeast forms uh, intracellularly within the uh, uh, macrophages uh, and that uh, confirms our impression of uh, histoplasmosis. <clears throat> Other stains were negative in this individual. Um, histoplasmosis is not a common uh, entity in the uh, GI tract. Usually we see it in the lungs um, but if there is immunosuppression, such as in HIV or AIDS, uh, dissemination can occur. Uh, and this certainly accounts, uh, would, it, would qualify as one of the uh, um, disseminated uh, infections that would uh, move a patient from just being uh, seropositive, HIV positive, to being uh, uh, immune suppressed on AIDS. Uh, this is a bacterium, or excuse me, a, a, a fungus that is uh, endemic uh, particularly in the upper Mississippi and Ohio River drainages in North America. So maybe it's something that's not seen uh, typically in Africa or maybe South America, uh, unless individuals have uh, had usually a prolonged period of residence in these uh, areas, uh, then they would have uh, been uh, possibly exposed and developed a uh, subclinical um, and contained infection uh, within their upper respiratory tract. Then upon ex uh, development of immunosuppression that uh, then can uh, disseminate uh, and involve the colon or other uh, uh, disseminated sites. In the colon, uh, it can be fairly subtle, sometimes just producing a mild plaque or even no finding. Occasionally these uh, histiocytes will aggregate to form a polyp or there may be ulceration or even stricture formation uh, that may develop in these situations. So our final sign-out diagnosis is histoplasmosis colitis, uh, HIV infection, and AIDS uh, in this 31-year-old uh, patient. Well, thanks so much for joining me for this case. Uh, I hope that it's been instructive and will help you to think about the differential in immunosuppressed patients uh, who have uh, GI symptoms. Uh, if you liked it, please leave us a comment. Um, and uh, of course, uh, we welcome you to subscribe so that you'll be sure to catch future releases from our channel. Uh, so until next time, thanks so much for joining us.